Look, uh, there are people out there that think a huge change is coming in the future. And the theory goes like this. Right? Entire economies are going to collapse, worldwide political instability and global wars. And what do you think is going to cause that? Global warming? Natural disaster? Maybe asteroid, space, Earth? <laughs> nope. Some people believe it could be because of something as simple as the price of oil. The theory is called peak oil. Is this peak oil? Let's set it up. Peak oil is a theory that goes like this. The global production of oil will hit its peak and then start to decline. Now, it doesn't mean the world will run out of oil. What it means is that the world will run out of cheap oil. The idea has been around since the mid-50s. Back then, a Shell oil geologist named Marion King Hubbard predicted that U.S. oil production could hit its peak in the early 1970s. Well, remember that oil shock back in the 70s? It's nothing compared to what supporters of the peak oil concept think we're in for once the decline starts. Economic collapse, geopolitical conflict, and the end of your lifestyle as you know. It. Here's why. The U.S. consumes about a quarter of the world's oil production. It's used for everything from transporting food to manufacturing DVDs. But demand in China and India is increasing. I mean, they do account for one-third of the world's population. So if China's consumption rate holds, then by about 2030, it'll guzzle as much oil as the U.S. does today. Factor in the rest of the planet and their growth and their needs and what you've got is increasing demand and shrinking supply of a finite resource. OPEC is the source of about 40% of the world's oil. And while it doesn't set the price, it does determine how much gets produced and that more or less determines the cost. And the price per barrel is getting higher. The record so far, about 58 bucks US. Both the IMF and the CIBC have warned of $100 barrels. One of the world's leading energy analysts says that could happen in the next three years. As for a date when we could hit peak oil, well, that's hotly debated and hard to determine. But depending on who you talk to, it could happen sometime between the next year and 2020. So then after we hit peak oil, the world could totally change. But the question is how? What's life going to be like? And is it going to be that much different on a practical level from the lives that we live now? So we've got a guy who wrote a book. It's called The Long Emergency. And he knows his peak oil. And he should have some answers for us as well. His name is James Kunstler. And he joins us from New York. James, when, when people hear about oil prices, they, they, they generally think it's going to cost me more to heat my home. It's going to be way more expensive to put gas in my car. But that's generally how you hear about it. Paint us a picture about what you think life would be like after we hit peak oil. When we uh, head down this slippery slope of depletion, it's going to change everything about how we live. We're going to have, we're going to, have to live profoundly and intensely local. Uh, we're going to have to downscale all of the activities in everyday life. We're going to have to uh, grow a lot more food close to home. Uh, we are going to have to. Uh, uh, we're going. We're going to stay closer to home, and life will be a lot less about uh, easy motoring and continuous mobility. Um, we're going to have to reestablish local networks of economic interdependency, and probably say goodbye to uh, mega activities like national chain retail and Walmart. Uh, it's going to make us choose a, a lot of different uh, ways of living. We're going to have we're going to have problems with everything from you know industrial agriculture uh, uh, featuring the 3,000 mile Caesar salad, and the fact that the job base will be uh, contracting. Uh, we're going to be faced with the the prospect of suburbia, which is where more than half the people in North America live, uh, becoming a, really a dysfunctional. Uh, infrastructure for daily life. Has it changed the way uh, the class system works? Would, would you say goodbye to a middle class? Uh, I think there's going to be a new class, uh, which I call the formerly middle class. They're going to be uh, very angry. They're going to be bewildered by the loss of their entitlements to the so-called American dream, uh, the uh, uh, home in the suburbs, the drive-in utopia. Um, I think that that may uh, evolve into a kind of politics of grievance and resentment, uh, and, and really all bets are off uh, for uh, social order.
Well, when you hear about the last 30 years, the peak oil talk, the 70s, the sky is falling, oh my God, we're finished, that, that happened before. Uh, is, is this the same thing? Uh, no, the, the last time it was uh, the United States hitting its production peak, and what that really represented was a great geopolitical shift of power, uh, chiefly of pricing power from the United States to the Middle East. Uh, what we're going to see now is something quite different. As the world passes its all-time oil production peak, you will see the complex systems that we rely on begin to destabilize and to wobble and to uh, mutually amplify the, di the distress that they are manifesting. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to be sleepwalking into a period of considerable hardship uh, and distress. Well, this will change politics as well, won't it? When you hear about wars now, the, the natural cynicism of people is, ah, oh, they're fighting over oil and all that. So the next stage of, of global conflicts are going to be these resource-based wars, won't they? Well, I think that that's a fair statement. Uh, what we have to ask ourselves uh, is, um, how far are we willing to go? Are we going to engage in a land war in Asia over the resources of uh, Kazakhstan and places like that? The Chinese can walk into places like that. Uh, we can't. Um, uh, how long are we going to occupy unfriendly countries in the Middle East? Uh, three years? Five years? We've been in Iraq for two, and it's already a project that we uh, can't have a whole lot of confidence in. So one of the conclusions you can draw is that... Uh, uh, America may have to retreat back into the Western Hemisphere. And when we do, will we lose most of our access to most of the remaining oil in the world? This is going to turn into Mad Max beyond Thunderdome, isn't it? Well, you know, Mad Max is a funny example because if you actually go back and look at the movie, the movie's most about people driving around in cars. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of these things are kind of counterintuitive. And, and uh, uh, we're going to see a lot of things that people actually aren't planning on right now. James, thanks a lot for your time. We appreciate it. You're quite welcome. This oil thing's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. I want to give you another oil story for you here. A case in Anchorage, Alaska right now involving some environmental laws that are being broken. What we've got is a jury who's going to try to decide if an organization, a ship's captain and ship's agent, are all criminally negligent. They're accused of failing to submit the proper oil spill response paperwork before the ship entered state waters. Now, all three of the defendants are charged with misdemeanor criminal counts. The organization says the paperwork thing was just an oversight. Uh, then they got it rectified quickly. But just for your, uh, for your ears. What do you think the organization facing the charges are? Greenpeace. Yup.